Welcome to the Outer Realm with Michelle DeRoche and Amelia Passano. Airing live on the United Public Radio Network, 105.3 FM in New Orleans. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday night segment of the Outer Realm. We are broadcasting live on the United Public Radio Network, UFO Paranormal Radio Network, 105.3 from the Gulf Coast and 107.7 FM from New Orleans. We are fully sponsored by the amazing people over at Folgers Coffee who have been a part of our journey since the very beginning. So thank you, Folgers. It wouldn't be the same without you, nor would we want to do it without you. Just saying. We're truly grateful for. Dr. Snick, the sonic surgeon, a.k.a. Justin Snicker, for the contribution of his time, his music, and his voice for the intro that you just heard. He's an award-winning composer of Halloween horror, sci-fi, and dark wave electronic music, which can be found on all of your favorite music streaming platforms. Also, big thank you to Steve McGinnis, the artist behind the banners and logos here at the show. Check him out on Facebook and Instagram. Also specializes in the horror genre. See where I'm going with that? We love that stuff over here. Anyway, does great commission pieces of all sorts, including pet paintings. I know, big contrast, but he does amazing stuff. Uh, we are really, really um, excited to talk about... Um, I'm totally having a brain toot, so why don't I just go ahead and put this up right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I always want to show this. Okay. Contact and Disclosure Symposium 2024 on April the 20th at the Offworld Bar in Toronto this Saturday. So check them out at contactanddisclosuresymposium.com. Get your tickets, check out the guests, and go see what they're all about. It's going to be the very first one. So we're really pleased to be a sponsor of this brand new event. Okay, second year in the row, the Halifax Paranormal Symposium on October 12, 2024 at the Halifax Tower Hotel and Conference Center. So check out PPRI.net at Halifax Paranormal Symposium for your tickets and guest information as well. So second year in a row for us. We're very excited about it. Elliot Van Dusen, who is putting this shindig on and, of course, is the director of PPRN, is one of the hosts here at the radio show. We catch him out every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern with Dr. Yana Greenberg called Science and Paranormal. So bang up show. They really do a great job. And you'll hear them talking about it. He'll be the guy to uh, get you guys all informed, shall we say. <laughs> anyway, tonight we welcome back our dear friend. I mean, I have to say, it's just not just so much a dear friend. Preston's like family, pretty much. We always, you know, kind of joke around about that. Frequent flyer miles. That's 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 definitely Preston with us, and we love having him on. He's going to be discussing his newest book, Not From Around Here, Volume Five. I know. We'll get ready for some really awesome Preston stories because here they are. Hello. <laughs> Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Not bad. Can't complain. <laughs> I do anyway, but I'm doing good. Yeah, I do. <laughs> there we go. This is for you. <laughs> Can I get a shout out? Hello, Preston and Michelle from New Zealand. Hello, Jagan Thompson. Hello, hello. <laughs> there we go. Oh, boy. Just look, it's not just, just me who loves you, Preston. Look at all these people Aww. just chiming in. I know. <laughs> I know. This is great. We'll just pop them up. And so, you have a new book upcoming has it been released yet what's yeah it's a brand new book here Ooh. i'll pop it up since i have control there Ooh. it is not from here volume five i love it and knocky <laughs> exactly i love it <laughs> it's funny because the previous four volumes each had a different type of et first was a gray then a praying mantis human looking a reptilian Right. And I'm kind of out of ideas. So I'm really? talking. It's I'm pretty thinking. cool. And Dolly's like, how about an Anunnaki? Dolly Saffron, of course, being 
the subject Dolly. of symmetry. We all know Dolly. Dolly. I know. Yeah. I always break out in song. <laughs> Don't do that. I've never done that to her. I knew a girl named Jude, and I never did it. <laughs> I never said, hey, Jude. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, she knows I can't help it, though. I really do. <laughs> I just really can't. So, <laughs> you know, but I, I love the cover, actually, because a lot of people, um, you know, who may not even follow along a whole lot with aliens or, or different um, extraterrestrial races, everybody seems to know the Anunnaki. They seem to think this is where it all began whether it did or didn't, it, it fascinates me as to how many people are actually aware of who the Anunnaki actually are. So the beautiful cover. Yeah, I'm very pleased with it. My sister-in-law did it. <laughs> yeah, Kisara. <laughs> she does most go. of my books. And we actually gave her a good representation from an ancient statue. Well, Dolly went through all of them. She's like, well, this one's closest. Let's right. give her this one. Right. But yeah, she... Definitely spruced it up a little bit. Right. <laughs> put the little fancy colors around it. Right. But yeah, I mean, it's largely accurate. Yeah, so. I I love it. I think it was a great choice. You know, if you're going to get to a point where you're going to run out pretty soon. <laughs> I know. Well, it's going to be the last volume for a while because I've kind of... <laughs> these, yeah. th these volumes are basically drawn from my articles that I've written over, gosh, over 35 years now. Wow. And I had a couple left. So actually, this book has a feature none of the others have. It's largely new. Most of them are brand new stuff. Right. But I love right. exploring those weirder aspects, you know, the unexplored dark avenues <laughs> that I other know. researchers wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. I did a chapter on alien anal probes because people keep walking on that. <laughs> right. Fine, I will go there. I'm going to go there. I love it. So I did a big analysis, analysis. On that. <laughs> That's going to answer a lot of bloody questions. Because did you notice, is this just me? But I think people are really fixated on that. Yeah, and it's unfortunate because it's not a big part of the onboard experience. It certainly happens. Right. I thought, you know, I'll, I'll dive deep. Pun intended. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, you're start. setting me up, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you well, know I want to take a look, it. seriously, because it's, it's serious for those who go through it. And I did not expect, I mean, I didn't find that many reports. I found maybe 10 or 20. So it's wow. not a huge, huge part of this. Right. And it got really popular for some reason. I think because of the South Park show, which introduced that with their episode <laughs> where Kenny <laughs> gets probed. You're not wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> apparently, oh you know, Whitley Strieber did talk about it. He had that experience. I know John Mack had a case. It comes up. Yes. No, not a lot of cases. It's just a colonoscopy. <laughs> Honestly, that's all it is. As near as I can tell. I wouldn't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. No, I know. Some people are just really funny about, you know, certain parts of their anatomy, you know, and, but I think it's because it's, it's such, you know, for some people, because this is where I had a real tough time is because it's intrusive that you are in your safe zone and, you know, a lot of people get taken right from their homes or their bedrooms and yeah. it's where you're supposed to feel safe. So when you throw that in the mix, it's really an intrusion. Um, and I think, I think people just you know, put the two together and, and it's just like, no, you come in here, you kidnap me and you do this to me. And, and for, for the number one complaint for sure. Yeah. <laughs> sense of loss of control. Right. I think, honestly, the ETs find it a little bit confusing because most people who are having these experiences at some point believe that this was something they did a lot. I'm not going to say everyone because it's just not true. Right. Some people do feel an absolute sense of violation from beginning to end. Right. But a lot don't. I mean, they seriously realize that they're getting a lot out of this experience. Right. Uh, and when they're healed and they're you know taught how to pilot the craft and they're given warnings and given all kinds of spiritual information and have their psychic abilities boosted. Yes. They start to realize, you know, this is not as bad as I thought. Right. In the beginning, mm -mm. <laughs> it's most people are not happy campers. 
No, I, 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 you know, not everybody gets to remember everything. Like I started really associating my things I went through in my childhood, but I mean, especially my fascination for the stars and the stories my grandfather would talk to me, tell me about and, and into adulthood, all this like floodgates open up and all of this started coming forward. And it's, you know, I think it was due to my being uncomfortable with it, what we were just talking about, not the anal probing part, just saying, <laughs> but, you know, but the boudoir entry, we are supposed to feel safe and, you know, and once I got comfortable with it, um, then it was a game changer. And, and this is what I love about the stuff that you write and document. They are always more, for the most part, I would say 95% lighthearted and show a really nice side to everything in a time where everything is just you know, so fear-based. Yeah. You know, I've been accused of being an alien lover, <laughs> a UFO <laughs> apologist. Wow. Yeah. You know, basically talking only about benevolent cases, and it's just not true. I right. do not edit people's accounts. I'm very, you know, I make a great effort to be factual and report right. just what people are reporting. It's their experience. It's not my job to edit it. Right. Yeah. So right. I, I can tell you, this is what people are telling me. You right. know, I know that there's some scary stories out there. Mm -hmm. and I know there are some researchers who are <laughs> hell bent on saying this is bad. Right. And their research overall is very fear based. And I question it. Well, why do you think that is? Like, why would they want to do that? I mean, a couple of reasons. I think one, they're flat out agents, you know, mm -hmm. working for our what we would call the secret government. Right. Right. Another would be that they themselves are just fear based. Right. You know, they've had a lot of fear surrounding this because mm -hmm. some of these people are doing hypnosis. Right. And, you, and when you're doing <clears throat> hypnosis and you already have a pretty, you know, kind of a thought about what's going on. Right. You don't ask about the spiritual aspects. You don't ask about, you know, what, what did you get anything good out of this? You know what I mean? Mm. Um, I mean, I talked to someone who went to a very famous researcher and she told me flat out, he took out all the spiritual stuff. It's not in the book. I'm really mad <laughs> because my experience was misrepresented. It wasn't bad. Right. It was portrayed as bad. And I have to mm -hmm. tell you, I went on a couple of TV shows. I talked about one guy who was, you know, not pulled on board so much. He believes he was taken to an underground area. He saw rock walls. Mm -hmm. And he says, he's a pilot, a doctor. Right. You know, and a really smart, smart guy. And uh, he described his experience to me. And I went on TV with it. And I explained the whole thing. And they portrayed it fairly accurately but then you know i'm off camera and, and they're doing the voiceover and right, they said, this right. witness fears for his life every day i'm like what <laughs> i did not say that he did not say that that was a flat out lie right i was on another tv show same darn thing they basically edited my words up and said that aets are coming to invade and i had trouble for that recently someone said Look at he's Preston has changed his mind. He said ETs were going to invade, and now he's saying no. I'm like no, 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 no. Look at the show again. I never said that. Right, right. Put words in my mouth. Right, right. I've learned to be very careful now when going on TV. I'm <laughs> nervous. You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? You can be labeled pretty quick. Yeah, you have to be so careful. You know. Uh, what what you say and what comes out and ends up on the cutting room floor are two entirely different things. They can make you say anything and appear to be anything. So, oh, I was so mad at one show. They asked me how many people are taken on board per year. Do you think in say California? Right. I'm like I don't know. It could probably be upwards of a thousand. Right. You know, and I didn't put the question in the answer. I should have because they mm. they asked no because asked another question how many per day do you think and so i'm like oh you know a couple maybe it could be upwards of 10 or 12 i don't know it's hard to say right but 
that question, how many do you think per day? And there I am on TV saying, it's thousands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, yeah, man. see what I mean? Oh, see what so I mean? Bad. Like, it, it is really, really difficult. It's, it's, and you can't get away from that. It's like any television I've done. Okay, you're going to answer some questions. Like, you know, you've been in the hot seat. You know what it's like. And you give them like five answers to every question. And it's always like the most dramatic you know, and, and and like I said, you know, the whole world thinks I run around screaming demon. Well, re meanwhile, I'm a psychokinesis kind of girl. I <laughs> tell you, I think you're projecting a lot of that stuff. That's like, but nobody wants to hear that. You know, I would think it would be incredible for people to have an understanding of how powerful we are as human beings that we can project out energy that can create footsteps and doors to open and telekinesis and do these incredible things, but it's just easier for them to think that there's something more sinister. Yeah. And not that it's not at times, absolutely, you know, um, but it gets to be a little bit crazy. Uh, so I'm just going to back up a minute. So King James, hello, harvesting fetuses in a peaceful endeavor. Well, yeah. You know I did talk to a lady, Pat Brown, who had that experience, and she lived in fear of these greys. You know, she actually asked for it. <laughs> she, she went to Arizona to see some, quote, walk-ins. Right. And, and these guys were chan su supposedly <laughs> channeling ETs. And she's right. like, yeah, sure you are. Because you know, the guy was speaking for the greys. He's like, I am a grey and I'm on this ship. And she's like, well, I want to go on your ships. So she drives back home to <laughs> Pacoima. <laughs> outside of LA, she lives in an apartment or a condominium complex, really crowded, right. starts having these grays coming in for like a lot of them over a period of three or four months. She mm. lost her mind with fear. I mean, she wasn't getting any sleep. Finally, she was so exhausted. She says, if this is really happening to me, no, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. Oh boy. Put me on your ships right now and we're going to have it out. And she woke up on the craft and that changed her experiences. It was much more interactive. They said, mm -hmm. listen, we're not trying to hurt you. We're trying to impart knowledge to you. Right. And they basically told her all these, all kinds of things about past lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, she has, you know, masculine and feminine, feminine yeah. aspects. Yes. She had a spiritual experience where they took her out of body and showed her all the negative thought forms surrounding our planet. I said, this is choking your planet. All the wow. evil thoughts and the fear that people are putting out. Right. And it changed everything for her. And she says, wow. oh, yeah, I do feel this was positive. I still have some negative feelings. Right. And here's another case, which blew my mind, actually. This couple from Nova Scotia, a young couple, had uh, gotten pregnant before they wanted to. And they're like, okay, fine. Right. She had, she had just moved from Europe. He was starting a business. They had just moved to this small town, which was a little more ultra-religious than they would have liked. But... They yes. were they had red tape issues with insurance. I mean, they were having a lot going on. Right. <clears throat> now she's pregnant. They're like, well, okay, this is good news. Right. And they built the nursery. You know, they've got a midwife. They went to the doctor. They were seven and a half months along, fully verified. She sent me the photos of her, you know, the medical records, pictures of her with her huge belly. Sweet, sweet, sweet couple. They contacted me. We're like, you're the fifth researcher we've contacted. Mm -hmm. They all just wanted the story. And I'm like, listen, you know, it's interesting as your story is, I'm just here to help you. Right. You know, that's my primary purpose. Right. Right. So, so we were talking and they explained how seven and a half months into their pregnancy, they had a weird night where there was this huge electrical storm going on outside that wasn't normal. Right. And we're looking out the window and there's bolts of electricity going horizontal in front of their window. This is late, late at night. They freaked out. They, you know, this is July, a warm night. They right. slammed the window closed and jumped back in bed and both went, boom, mm. straight unconscious. You know, did They were like, their hearts were beating and they were on adrenaline and then boom, they're out. So that was weird. Number one, weird. Number mm -hmm. two, they wake up the next morning feeling very woozy. Wow. She's like, gosh, you know, I feel like I've just come out of an operation or something. Right. She says, honey, does my stomach look you know, flatter to you? And he's like, no. She says, I don't think I'm pregnant. He's like, she's, he's mm -hmm. like, you, honey, you're kidding. There's no yeah. way. 
Right. And she's right. like, I know, you know, when I know, I know. Yes. Like, no, no, the baby was breached. You know, we've been doing these exercises to get the baby in the right position. Sure, that's what it is. She's like, we need to go to our next appointment now. Get an ultrasound because they were scheduled for one. And they moved it up and went to the doctor. And the doctor's like, hmm, call, you know, calls in the nurse. I'm like, hmm, they're not saying anything. They're very concerned. He's like, I'm not getting a heartbeat. There's no heartbeat. You know, and do, did more tests and said, well, you're not pregnant. And she's like, what are you talking about? I came in here. You heard the heartbeat. He says, there must have been a mistake. I'm I as big as a house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, you know, how do you get around that? She had every single sign, morning sickness, yes. you know, all of it. Right. And right. Uh, the doctor's like, well, there's a mistake. Heads are going to roll. We don't know what happened. He was so, clearly upset, the doctor. Did and they ever return the child? Because sometimes uh, they go back and forth with them, right? Yeah. Well, here's what's interesting. You know, he, he's The husband starts crying and he's upset. And she was upset too. But she says, honey, you know, I'm actually not that upset. I know my baby is fine. I'm actually okay with this. He's like, you're right. kidding. <laughs> no, I, I am okay with this. Right. He was a very analytical, cut and dry kind of guy. Right. They both did have a history of encounters in their family. But she okay. was very spiritual, really mm -hmm. into meditation and psychic stuff and healing, mm -hmm. as you might expect. And I talked to her. I'm like, you're okay with this? She says, I really, really am. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. And yes, later she was taken on board, did see her child. Right. Right. Uh, so was this child a hybrid or just, you know, was it just that they'd been following the family lines for so long that they took this, you know, this human baby? Maybe they've done it with others throughout her ancestry. Yeah. She said the child looked normal, but I've talked to a lot of people who've had this. Right. One lady, she had a couple of babies with them, missing fetuses, the whole deal. Right, right. They, they, finally, they, she's like, what's going on? And they said, okay, you know, we're actually done. Uh, mm. we're, you're going to get pregnant now, and you will keep the baby. She, she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. So basically, you don't know. They just don't know if it was a hybrid baby, like part extraterrestrial and human no. or they're just like, no, we're just going to take this little tot and observe it. And I didn't get to do him. a formal interview with that part. It was the last time I talked to her. She mm -hmm. disappeared. The, the husband freaked out. He, they had a separation, I believe. Right. Uh, she kind of oh. ran off. <laughs> How do you? Yeah. I mean, that would take a very strong person or people yeah. to be able to go, th go through something like that. I, I couldn't imagine. I mean, I think... For her, because she she knows, she feels it, she senses it. You have that connection. Maybe she has better memories because exactly. she's been taken before, meets this guy, and he's just like, no, because guys are really logical on an average, right? It's, it's it's like, no, I can't get my head around this. This isn't a thing. Yeah. Like, well, where is guy, the child? I spoke to a guy from New York who right. was shown his hybrid child. Right. Because the ETs came on and said, well, we have no mean to harm you. You need to know why we've been contacting you. This is why. Aren't you excited? He's like, no, I'm not excited. Right. He said all these emotions went through him. He was repulsed by the child. At the same time, he was absolutely drawn to it and loved the child. He was really angry with the ETs. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, he was relieved and glad he got an explanation. I mean, all this was going on. It was his right. first and really only full on onboard conscious contact. Because he was wow. at a missing time. And this comes down again to fear. So these people who are having this, and I'm like, gosh, I hate that they're stealing my babies. Uh, mm -hmm. They, Yeah, I understand it. I am certainly not judging anyone. Right. But if you can get past the fear, you are much more likely to have communication and understanding of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. But this is right up there with the most controversial aspect of onboard UFO encounters. Right, right. The Dolly uh, Saffron had this experience, and she's they talked to her about it. She's a fully conscious contactee, and they mm -hmm. asked, she said, Okay, yeah, and right. it happened. And she's met her hybrid child more than once, ch right. children, right? I mean, she came down and healed her of a broken elbow, right? 
right like, doctor yeah well, that's helpful <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> can you use some help now <laughs> you know where are you um okay let me get to some comments if it's okay or questions uh preston i have oh hello don i i have heard it is the palladians that want to help us and are helping us have you heard of this also um well P pleiadians is a word a label <laughs> that has become very popular. And I have to tell you, I've done some digging on this to find some good firsthand reporting on you know, Pleiadians as a, you know, a name. Mm -hmm. I'm not finding a whole lot of really good evidence of it. Interesting. Uh, I, I would call them human looking. Right. Um, and I think that's the label people give kind of to human looking ETs. Uh, mm -hmm. So I do think that all ETs are healing people. Well, I know. Right. I, I documented 300 plus cases. Right. Let's, let's analyze these. Who's doing the healing? It was more than 50% grays, <laughs> which was a shock to me. It is yeah. a shock. I would have thought maybe tall whites. I mean, They're all grays there. Are, but there's different variations of grays, right? Of course. Yeah. yeah. And see, look at here on this planet. We have people who are very short, people who are incredibly tall, yes. every possible skin color you can imagine just about. Right. Uh, and I think we have the same thing going on. There's a bell curve. There's ancestry among ETs as well. Excellent. Someone told me, why are there no black ETs? I'm like, I don't I'm know that there's not. <laughs> there yeah. Is, there's absolutely black skinned ETs. Yes. 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 <laughs> I mean, what are you talking Yeah, there are. No, there are. Yeah. There's black, there's white, there's yellow, there's blue, there's red. Mm -hmm. I've, I've heard all variations. Right, right. That's it's not crazy. super common, I will say. I don't get a whole lot of reports of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very <laughs> scarce. I just featured think... the case recently because I'm like, okay, here's some ammunition for this guy. I'm going to point to uh, Here's a good case from Denmark. Yes. 15-year-old kid was walking along and a UFO landed and out came two little black four foot tall humanoids, which looked mostly human, he said. I and mean, they had a nose, mouth, the whole deal. Right. They were black, you know, they look. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. That brown skin is how you. Right. I have to try to find my notes because when Joe and I did an episode of the Gray Zone Uncensored, we talked about different races of, um, you know, of alien beings. And we found, uh, there were black ones and they but they're different than what you're describing i should try to find them for you and see if, if uh you know i i went really dug deep on on finding different information and i was very surprised by it I was just like oh, this is interesting but I'll, I'll try to find it and send it to you because that mean that was probably a couple of years ago but i do keep everything so um yeah, too. i looked for green skinned <laughs> ones too and there weren't a whole lot of those as you'd think because everyone's like oh little green man yeah, not, not so much, yeah. right? Not as much as you think. Big no. mantis, maybe. <laughs> That's green. <laughs> you know. Um, Magic Martian. I love that handle. Is there any connection between UFO sightings and black helicopters visiting reportees? My mother and I saw a TR3B reported it, and the next day a black helicopter came to the house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, th this is not unusual. Contactees will report. Unmarked black helicopters coming over their house, even you know right after an encounter. Right. In fact, when I was investigating the Topanga Canyon UFO wave, there was a couple there who were having regular sightings. I mean, this UFO was landing next to the house. She was being pulled on board. Right. And uh, they said right. the helicopters would come the next night for three or four days in a row because they these encounters would usually happen over two or three days in a row. Mm. But as soon right. as one of these saucers showed up, these black helicopters were there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they're unmarked, which is technically not supposed to be happening. No, no. You know, they're supposed but to I, have markings. I, I think she's also saying like they reported seeing this TR3B and they were visited. Yeah. So I don't know if it, maybe they are contactees as well, but. They were reporting. Simply reporting it, yeah. You, yeah, and they got a visit. If you're going public, you know. Yes. They are not only monitoring activity, they're threatening witnesses and watching them. 
So I think that's part of it. It's, it's an intimidation tactic. Well, again, I mean, it might sound like a really stupid question, but but why? You're flying this big behemoth across the sky. Somebody's going to see it. They're not as stealthy as they think they are. There's there's these triangular-shaped jobbers are all over the place. People all over the world are seeing them. Yeah, well, those are probably reverse-engineered government yes. craft. Right. Um, it is weird to me that, okay, let's just go over a neighborhood and let, let everyone see us. Right. That's part of probably the false flag right. preparation. Yes. There's so much buzz in the UFO community that right. you need to <laughs> pay attention to it. Right. I, I yeah, I looked into you know triangular UFO cases because mm. Dolly and other people told me, no, you know, they're not, ETs don't generally fly triangular craft. So I'm going through all my cases. I'm like, well, gosh darn it, I can't find one. You know, and I finally found a couple. But I think people are sometimes seeing more chevron or V-shaped, right? Describing it as triangular. So I don't know. Right. She goes, "Yes, thank you." It was unmarked, unlit, and double propeller hovered in my yard and shook the house. Yeah, they'll come right down to window level and look right at you. You can see the person in it. They'll take That's, pictures of you. That is brazen. <laughs> yeah. You know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that is that's that's really brazen. Yeah, rude. <laughs> I mean, yeah. just, it's like uh, really, okay. you really need to do this. Okay, this is Joe. <laughs> now we have drones. Yep, it's yeah. true. It's what true. There's other things you have to have to worry about. You know. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, press is your guy, that's for sure. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so another star here. Um, Preston, are we not all hybrids? I think so. Um, I think there's kind of varying degrees of hybrids and levels of contact and a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. but let's face it, we're we call ourselves humans, you know, we look the way we look pretty much all across the planet with variation. And then there's ETs that look pretty much like us. They're right. often described as being perhaps a little taller, six and a half feet, but not always. I've got cases of five and a half foot, mm -hmm. you know, Mesoamerican or brown skinned or white skin. I mean, all ethnicities again. Right. But, you know, the fact that there are human looking ETs out there has profound implications. Mm -hmm. And here we are struggling to explain human origins as right. evolution and evolving from, you know, what have you, monkeys. You know, we were, according to this classic evolution, we came from that little lemur type uh, rodent some, yeah, some millions of years ago. I remember even as a little kid, 13 or 14, kind of trying to track this out. I'm like, okay, how old? how many millions of years, 100,000 years would it take to, to turn this lemur into every mammal on this planet? Right. I don't get this. This doesn't right. sound right to me. No. Not that no. creationism is any better. Right. But once I dived into the UFO field, I'm like, gosh, you know, because a number of contactees have been told that we were basically brought here from Mars or that there's it, previous iterations of advanced civilizations that get wiped out and were lifted up and put back. Right. And that we're on the tail end of another, uh, this sort of thing happening. So, right. yeah, I think we are all hybrids. Right. And particularly contactees are having their genetics watched over and maintained very carefully. Right. Because right. they're the shakers and doers. They're the psychics. They're the doctors and nurses and teachers mm -hmm. and inventors and yes. scientists. And they're good yes. people, environmentalists, social workers. Right. Uh, super creative artists and musicians. Right. Was, well, you know when you've been overhauled, too. And you get a lot of downloads and, and you always know when, when you've had. I always say, like, you know, you'll wake up and you you feel a little worked over, but you're being sort of like, oh, I've been tweaked. And I, and it's an ongoing joke in the house. I've been tweaked. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but I don't know. I, I, you know, I think it's, it's a great thing. 
you know, when she becomes yeah, I mean, it's hard for it. people. One lady called me from Europe because she was losing her mind. She said, I can't go near computers. I don't know what's happening to me. Mm -hmm. I break every darn machine I touch. Right. Like, well, what's happening is your bioelectric field has been enhanced or expanded. Right. Or you're, you're now, your aura, so to speak, mm -hmm. has been strengthened. It's a good thing, but it can be difficult. It's difficult, especially when you start working with the frequencies because they, you know, the frequency changes, at least with me, the frequency will change at times. And sometimes it's, you know, it's a good thing. Sometimes not so much, but it, for me, it helps in my work and what I do, because I do yeah. a lot of planetary stuff. Right. And, um, well, you're and, doing and good work, but I, I was talking to a welder who had this and he kept blowing out the welding machine, which mm -hmm. is super expensive. He almost right. lost his job over it. They brought him in. They're like, you're getting, you're going to the doctor. We need to know why you're blowing out this machine every time you go on it or taking you off of it. That's <laughs> Amelia with her toaster ovens. <laughs> 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 her convection ovens. Yeah, it gets very pricey. Yeah. You know. A lot of contactees can't even wear a watch. Right. And right. You just give it up after a while. It always breaks down. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Next, 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 next. Uh, question. Hello, Maggie's a reptilians that is it the reptilians that have the clicking language have had experience of being observed by them? You know, I couldn't tell you. I, I think the grays do. Yeah. They sound like dolphins. Someone just asked me that for like, you know, why is yeah. it always telepathic? Has not anybody heard the ETs talking? I'm like, well, they have. Yeah. yeah. The human looking yeah. ones. That's more often you hear just normal language, whatever your language is. Right. And even telepathy, you might hear their language, you know, their voice. Right. Rays, one lady says, you know, I could hear them talking to each other. I didn't understand what they were saying. And I asked her, well, how do they sound? And she got all embarrassed. I'm like, I'm just imitate it. And, yeah. she, she, and she said, wee, 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 <laughs> wee. So they kind That's of just like squeaking. Yeah. And another lady s said she had a visitation by mantids who healed her of glaucoma. And she was couldn't see them. She, her eyes were closed, but she could hear them talking. And she said it was very clicky, very clicks see, and snaps. That, that is interesting. And the another, clicking. I've heard clicking. I've got recordings of clicking. Yeah. Um, this comes up. In, well, in the previous volume, I did phone call from an alien, <laughs> which, wow. uh, which does happen. <laughs> wow. Wow. Betty Andreasen and Debbie Jordan Cobble both experienced this. And it was very lots of clicks, lots of consonants. Mm -hmm. uh, one guy I talked to, he's, he says, you know, when you press your tongue up against the top of your root, roof of yes. your mouth, and go, yeah. yeah, yeah, he says it sounded but, a lot like that. Dolly yeah. says she's heard it, and it reminds her of the Inuit language. So right. if you want to get a close approximation, you can to me, it's like, it sounds like a dolphin. That's what, uh, yeah, that's what Joe says as well. Yeah, I heard a guy channel dolphins once. <laughs> He started doing, <laughs> he's channeling dolphins. I'm like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> that was different. <laughs> but there's there's something to do with the connection too, though, with dolphins. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you remember um, uh, Carl Sagan and other scientists um, created an, uh, an organization called the Order of the Dolphin. And they believe that dolphins would and could communicate with ET. And there have actually been, people who have seen or especially out at sea obviously where at one time a craft came down and the dolphins congregated underneath it and just started swimming underneath and coming up and yeah well guess what here's a little bit of a scoop for you we're gonna put out symmetry too right we started the interviews with dolly and mm -hmm. i brought that up because you know she says a lot of stuff that i'm like gosh why didn't you tell me this before we could have put it <laughs> i know <laughs> and dolphins right. came up and there were some very interesting things to say Oops. yes they do take them on board in a nutshell <laughs> right right hold and on do communicate with them and i've talked to other people who have seen dolphins on board or certainly read accounts see uh, and so remember Star be... Trek when they were communicating with the whales <laughs> One of the yes, stars. Yes, I was just about to say that. <laughs> yes, the whole plan is about getting ready to get destroyed until you find humpback whales that are extinct in this world or their time, and had to go back in time to get two humpback whales and bring them back. It was a fantastic yeah. episode of I Star Trek. That one. Yeah, you know, it, it was it has to be one of my favorite. They're still studying cetaceans and upgrading their 
what they believe, you know, how intelligent they are. Frankly, all animals look, they're looking at ravens and crows because oh, yes. they found out that crows are actually teaching their children, you know, where things are in the neighborhood because they, they proved this. Yes. Yes. They're uh, and, brilliant. And there's a dog studies where dogs know like 500 words. You can say, go get the fuzzy teddy bear, go get this, go get that. And the, and the guy's got, you know, he's not making any gestures or doing right. anything. The dog knows. We we don't give animals enough credit. It's you want true. To see an ET, look to, yeah, whales, dolphins, dogs, mm -hmm. birds. Those right. are other species that are different from us and yet share sentience. Sentience right. is a, a word that I think we're, you know, we call ourselves sentient. We're the most intelligent being on this planet. Are we? No. <laughs> Are we no, <laughs> we can't even play nice in the sandbox. I always say it. We're terrible. Yeah. We're we're salty. We're sassy. We just we have to have things our own way, you know. I, I mean, we we humanity is just a dangerous animal, and and realistically, you know, we kill for sport. Animals don't usually they don't do that. They kill for survival or self defense or you know like it, it, I mean. I don't know. I just, they, you know, I remember seeing something. I think it was an article. They posted a picture. I have it somewhere. And they did an experiment at one of the world fairs. And basically they had humans, or they had a mirror. And they said, you know, look here and see what, what you see. And then something along the lines of, you, you know, this is the most dangerous animal in the world. And they were looking at themselves. <laughs> That was at one of the world fairs. I'm thinking, wow, that's profound. Yeah, that is. You know, that is really profound. Um, okay, let me just go back here. There we go. Uh, since experiences get harassed, but MIB and the like, do you think ETs are secretive to keep us safe? I think sometimes, yeah. Uh, you know, that's a difficult question to answer for sure. Because I think there's different things going on. I think sometimes they're secretive to keep themselves safe. Right. You know what I mean? Because we will go after them, our secret government and right. what have you. Uh, but right. yeah, I know of many cases where people have had an encounter and were basically told, you're not going to remember this for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And you will afterwards. Because to remember it immediately can be very disruptive. And I think sometimes this is why people do have missing time. Or might not remember it at all because this is not really their path. You know, their mission in life might involve you know raising children or pursuing a career in some you know whatever it is, and mm -hmm. to suddenly be dealing with you know all these memories of contact can be disruptive to what you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, so right. yeah, I think that, that is one one of the reasons they are or can be secret. Right. 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 Um, Tom, hi, Tom. Our arrogance creates separation from the gifts available between all creatures of this earth. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, Betty Andreas, one of my favorite contactees, the ETs told her, all the answers you seek can be found in nature, which is right. an amazing statement because if you read you know, the philosophers and scientists, yes. that's where we learned almost everything we know. Medicine came from... Basically, botany. Yes, <laughs> you know that's I mean? true. <laughs> Still does. <laughs> All you know? the medicines we have were from plants originally. Yes, yes. So there's a lot, lot, lot we can learn from nature. I think also, I mean, when you go back in time, you know, ancient people emulated what they saw, what they respected, you know, what they were in awe of. And you see so many ancient structures, you see petroglyphs, hieroglyphs, you see, you know, like oral history that gets passed down. I tend to wonder, you know, should we be looking at all this technology, which is just so, as much as we love it, it's so bad for us. And, you know, I mean, just with, with, with the microwaves and frequencies and things like that, it's just simpler to go back to a simpler time because the ancients seem to have it together. I mean, they really had a, good understanding of working you know they would say like our friends from the stars or the hopi would say you know our 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 big eyed hopi, friends yeah. from <laughs> yeah you know right from underground and things the like Native that americans 
were really smart yeah. in terms of how they treated the environment. Yes. We come over in just a few years, we killed all the buffalo. <laughs> it's like, what? Which That's was true. intentional, actually. But right. I mean, we're polluting right. our rivers. There is DDT in every organic molecule on this planet. They found it at the bottom of the ocean. You know, the bottom of the ocean has a layer of plastic underneath it, you know, at the bottom. We are not that bright. You know, we are destroying our own food source, our own air. Right. This is the, what the ETs keep telling us. Like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. We're going backwards. Yeah. This is why I think, you know, this is a, another positive aspect of ET contact. If they're mm -hmm. taking people on board and healing them, then saying, you know, don't use nuclear weapons. <laughs> why are you doing this? You're on the pathway to self-destruction. You know, the <laughs> greed, the corruption, the warlike ways. Yeah. Stop chopping down the forests. What are you doing? That's a good right. message. You know, right. I don't, if they wanted to hurt us, they could just leave us alone and we would do it ourselves. Oh, we're doing a fine job on our own. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, and we have to have to factor in that even plants, you know, have have a degree of intelligence. Trees communicate through the root system and they ground you. They ground this planet. They create your oxygen. When we, everybody would laugh, you know, at the term, oh, hug a tree, <laughs> all the tree huggers out there. But <laughs> a tree will very willingly share its energy, you know, and it does ground our energy. It's, it's This comes right from the earth. And you look at stone, which holds memory and has resonance. Everything on this planet does something. When you pick up a rock, you don't think much of it. But honestly, I mean, scientists have done experiments with different stones and how they have frequencies. And you go into these temples, for example, um, or churches, and the Knights Templar talk about this with, you know, circular, you know, circular rooms. And you can sing, you can chant, you can do all these incredible things. And they are able to actually catch these recordings, this residual from the stone, ancient bowls. Even clay oh. bowls, you know, will pick up different imprints and memory. They've all experimented with this stuff. I really like the work of, gosh, what's Emoto? The okay. guy who does that book on water. Now you can right. meditate on water and yes. it makes clear crystals and all these formations if you put you know, right. love energy towards it. Well, right. He's very scientific about it. The book was fascinating. I wish someone would duplicate his research. Oh my gosh! It was so interesting. I I find it very interesting. Sometimes people will definitely hey, you take that a step further. Some people label their water, and they will you know they'll talk to it and you know put, give love and you know well this is what I'm going to do today. Or, you know I'm going to drink you and you're going to nourish me and and you know one university in the United States did a an experiment with plants and they had two plants that they put behind two glass partitions. One, you were supposed to talk nice to. Every day the students would walk up to it and tell this plant how beautiful it was, how smart it was, and the plant flourished. Whereas <laughs> the other plant was bullied and all the leaves started wilting and going brown and it was dying. Oh my gosh, that poor plant. I, it, 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 science, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, leave the poor plant alone. <laughs> Talk nice to it after all. You know. <laughs> but I mean, be, right? But the thing is, is it goes to show you, it's just like there's so much that we we don't think about. You don't think about that with plants. I always talk to my plants. My plants are happy. <laughs> I got happy plants, Preston. Yeah. Well, one, one lady I interviewed, it's a contactee. As a very young child, she was living in this convent area, right? With all these nuns. Right. Where she would be, she was learning from them rather. She was living in an embassy, but would go to this convent to be taught. Right. And they she was displaying some weird abilities, like out-of-body experiences. She was describing the city around them. Right. And, and she knew more about the human body than she could. But there's this other really weird thing <laughs> that the room that she stayed in, the flowers would always stay fresh. And right. the other rooms, they weren't. And they finally tracked it to her. <laughs> the ex asked her to join. You know, they asked her mother, can, can she join the convent? And she's like, well, you can ask her. <laughs> uh, four or five, right? Right. <laughs> she's like, no. 
I'm not doing that. That's yeah, well, I'm good. Job. I'm five and I know better. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing because you know I've seen yeah. Dolly work with plants. Right. You know, we, we, we got an orchid plant from a friend mm, last year. Right. It's still blooming. I mean, it blooms came back. I've never. Right. I I've have one. That. <laughs> Must be a something thing. <laughs> I'll leave I that there. <laughs> People have green thumbs, I guess, but you know, contactees have a special connection to nature. Yes. You know, yes. I, I hear it all the time. Yes. You know, I, I, that's one of the questions I asked. You know, do you have any weird animal stories? <laughs> and they're like, oh my gosh, yes. Every yes. Anytime I go to anybody's house, the dog comes running or the cat right to me. Right. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh gosh, that cat hates everybody. <laughs> right. Oh. You're cutting it. oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Likes me, apparently. I'll tell you a very incredible story with a wolf when I was about, I would say, 13. And we, you know, school trip, we ended up at this, it was a private zoo and they, they rebuilt, rehabilitated some animals and some animals that really shouldn't have been there. Um, you know, it's a zoo, right? So I went up to an Arctic wolf and I guess it's another strange thing. It's just like, why it wasn't better security. So <laughs> I went up to the wolf. I just it looked at me. I looked at it. We just seemed to have a connection. I put my hand on the fence. It kept rubbing against my hands. And I, I put my hands in and I just started you know, through through the fence and just started rubbing it. And and this thing was just like, like just all over me. And they come rushing at me. No, you're not supposed to do that. It's just really aggressive. I'm just like, no. an aggressive thing about this thing. <laughs> but as soon as I they pulled me out and my arms got yanked out, the thing just went like ballistic. So, well, you gave me a good segue to go to t mention the book again. <laughs> Let's do this. Uh, here, volume five, because I did a chapter with uh, ETs taking dogs on board. Here, let me pull up this picture. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. that. Which is so cute. Aww. <laughs> my mouth is suddenly malfunctioning. Here we go. But at any rate, I've found a bunch of cases where ETs have taken people's dogs on board. There was right. this little guy from Ukraine, Rado, who the ETs came to his bedroom and like, we need to take you on board. He's like, can I take my dog? And I said, sure. And they took him on board with his dog. Right. You know, Dolly right. said that she was often taken with her pet. I think Heidi was the dog's name. Right. I found this other case. It's so funny. <laughs> this guy right. from Louisiana was hunting in the bayou with his dog, Hunterbone, his best friend. <laughs> you know, he's a backwoods guy. And uh, this UFO lands and his dog goes running towards it. He's like, Hunterbone, stop. Next thing, you know, he's <laughs> chasing after Hunterbone right up to this UFO. Boom, they're both on board. Well, he is, right? And there's little grays and they're examining him and took him up, you know, <laughs> into outer space, showed him another planet. So you need to stop messing around with nuclear power. You guys are much too warlike. The whole thing. Right. And then he's looking around for his dog. And saw, saw his poor dog floating around like a stuffed animal, paralyzed. And he's oh. like, what's up? And he said, well, your dog tried to bite us. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the poor <laughs> hunter bone was floating around like a stuffed animal on board of the UFO. <laughs> oh, my God. So I found a lot of cases where people have seen dogs on board. Right, so, right. So, I, I mean, if, if E.T. loves animals, and what do you make of all these cattle mutilations not et that's what i thought too you know i know that there's a lot of people who've got a lot of opinions about this yes and i sort of avoided the subject until i decided i'm gonna write ufos over new mexico because it's got you know a lot of really important incidents and i'm writing right. books on various states that i felt you know these states are influencing how we perceive the subject and New Mexico, and I did one for Colorado, they're both the hardest mm. hit states. Right. So I had to study mutilations. And I started mm. you know, going to the most famous well-known researchers. Lawrence Fawcett and Barry Greenwood were among the first to discuss it. And they ultimately decided it was government. I'm like, well, that's interesting. Yes. And so did Gabe Valdez. And he lived there and studied one after another. I talked to Christopher O'Brien. He's like, mm, I'm not so sure it's ETs. He's got his own opinions about what it is. 
Uh, but I don't think that it's ETs. Okay. And boy, when I brought it up to Dolly, she lost her mind. She's like, they're not. They wouldn't do that. They don't do that. Right. This information. Right. Uh, right. So, you know, I know that there's a lot of black helicopters being seen on these. Yes. Uh, people do report UFOs, but we do yes. have reverse engineered craft. Yes. You know, we do have 5G technology that can make you think you're seeing a craft. Right. And we certainly had the technology to do what people are describing in terms of these precision cuts. Right. Well, at the time, we didn't have lasers when a lot of these were taking place. We actually mm -hmm. did. It's just right. not in the public arena. So right. that was ultimately what I my assessment is. And I know mm -hmm. there are researchers out there who disagree. Mm -hmm. But I looked into it. And I have to tell you, that's, I think, the most logical explanation. It fits the pattern of what our government I don't like that term, the secret government, the cabal, no. right. is trying to do here. Right, right. So, I, I, it's, it not doesn't... that they won't take cattle on board. You know? Right. <laughs> you People know. have seen elk on board, and like you said, dolphins. One lady, yes. she was taken on board with a, her, she was on her pony with her dog, and both were taken on board. This is not ah. a dog pony show. This is for <laughs> real. <laughs> oh, my word. That is just so funny. <laughs> Another guy was taken on board oh. with his dog, and, and they weren't really that interested in him. They wanted to examine his dog. So, Wow. They would be hard-pressed with my dogs because they're like little two-pound chihuahuas that think they're very, like, a lot bigger. And like, <laughs> rah, 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 you know? <laughs> Poor it's little so grain. interesting because dogs can sense them coming. You know, there's yes. some animal reaction cases. Yes. The animals know. They have abilities that we are still trying to develop people have it too because they're like somebody's watching me and they turn around right. boom there's the et or there's a ufo or right. like i need to go outside right now and boom, right. that happened to me actually so i right. kind of get it right yeah we have a lot to learn from our little furry friends we do um they they pick up on everything they're just highly intuitive um but they can also feel again frequency they can feel when things are changing. You know, a few years ago um, at the manor house, like our other house, you could feel something come over. And my other home as well was, was also the same, um, like the last two places I've lived. And you could feel the whole house shake when something would come over it. Like it was very, very silent, but you could just feel it going like this. You look outside, nothing there. You could still see like right through to the stars. But there was a degree of silence except for the shaking of the house. Yeah. I talked to Linda Zimmerman and she put, put out the first book on animal reactions not right. too long ago. She's a New York based researcher. Right. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know how it's been what <laughs> 50, 80 years since this subject has really kind of moved towards the mainstream. Right. She's the first right. person to even look into this case, you know, analyzing all these cases. Right. It's right. Funny, you know, going on along that theme, Dolly mentioned once that ETs like capybaras. You know, which is the large, largest rodent in the right. rodent family, the capybara. Right. A lot, a lot of people don't even know what that is. But sure enough, I met, you know, Dolly knows someone who was taken on board with, with her. And right. I met him and he he's like, oh, my gosh, do you remember? And she, he turns out, he's like, what were those animals called? You know, those big, giant, like giant rats almost. And she's like, oh, capybara. He's like, that's it. <clears throat> They're running around the ship. That is hilarious, though. <laughs> Seriously. But you know what? They should be because I think it would actually calm people the heck down. You know, if I was people a little bit on edge being taken and you see a little cat or a chihuahua or a little dog running by, I think that would make you feel, I would feel a little bit more calmed down about it if I was on, on edge, you know? Yeah. It's funny. There was a lady at my office where I worked. Leslie, and she absolutely adored capybaras. She had pictures all over her office. I'm looking at her, and I wanted to ask her, like, "Have you been taken on board?" I didn't get the chance. She didn't last that long. Oh, <laughs> there a month or so. It was a tough office to work. My boss. Oh, made me nameless. That's funny. <laughs> Still have nightmares about that place. Oh my god, that is funny. <laughs> but I wonder. <laughs> you never know because sometimes things are going on in the background people don't even know um okay i'm gonna back up again a little bit again um 
Will any of the ET groups help to clean up the environment and help stop geoengineering? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't count on it. You know, we make our own messes and it's really up to us to clean up. But right. I think there's some limited amount of intervention. They're clearly concerned about the environment. Mm -hmm. And there was all this, you know, they did hover over the Malmstrom power plant, right? And there's mm -hmm. reports of them over Chernobyl. There's reports of them over uh, Three Mile Island and mm -hmm. more recently over Fukushima. Mm -hmm. And I wondered, you know, are they mitigating it to some degree? Right. Because uh, there's, you know, they do intervene to some level. Uh, but no, I'm not going to count on them to mm -hmm. fix our own problems because we would not learn. You know, mm -hmm. at some point, every child has to touch the stove and realize, ouch, that does hurt. You yeah, know? yeah. Don't touch it again. So essentially, we have to clean up our own mess. Yeah, and uh, it's a tough mm. lesson, but it's a tough lesson because it's not everybody. We're sort of at the mercy of people who are causing the harm. You know? That way, but right. if everyone really, you know, got the gumption and said, "No, I'm not going to carry a, a gun and go kill people in other countries. Right. And I'm not doing it." You know, right. if everyone in the world did that. Well, wars would be over in a day. Mm -hmm. I know that's a pipe you know, dream, idealistic yeah. and optimistic. And, yeah, but I yeah. mean, seriously, if we just allowed love and truth to guide our actions, mm -hmm. most people are super compassionate. Mm -hmm. Once they get you, you know, you might not like someone who's different and feel like they're stepping on you and taking your resources, but yeah. get to know them, and next thing you know, you're friends and you give them anything. Right. You right. Know, I think. I, I give people a chance, but I don't think they're going to stop genetic engineering. I recently stopped eating bioengineered food, and it was tough. I went to the store. Actually, yeah. you know, we saw it online and checked our cupboard, and I'm like, oh, no. Everything is there. We had to throw a lot of stuff away. Yes. And I'm like, yes. some of these famous companies who are like, oh, we're natural, and we remember how to make food the old-fashioned way. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. you yeah. <laughs> yeah, I call BS. <laughs> right? Yeah, and it's not in the ingredients. Yet. It's below the ingredients in the tiniest writing you can actually read. Right. Really, I think. Yeah, they have to list it, but they want to do it, so you're like, oh, I can't even be bothered to look, you know, and, because and it's so tiny. There's a way to avoid it, because European it's outlawed in Europe. Right. Anything, you know, imported from you know, European countries uh, mm. is probably uh, safe. I think some of these European countries eat better than we do. I'll tell you, I've, I'm a world traveler. I have traveled to upteen amounts of places. And you'll go to a fast food place here, and it's completely different. Like overseas, you know, Australia, yeah. for example, some of these places like the Golden Arches, they change and they have to change out their produce every single morning or they can be fined you know i would go to you know a famous chicken place that we love down here i go over there and i'm just like no this is like fuel injected over here i'm not touching it you go over there and i'm like nah -uh, i'm not being tricked and you know at me while my friends who live there are like no 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 you know try it it's, it's completely they're completely normal chickens like and, and you can see they're considerably smaller and they don't even they don't taste strange they you taste the difference yeah you know? like the tomatoes at the store they're so big and red and beautiful mm. but they're tasteless they are <laughs> they what? are yeah they're very pretty though i will say that's right and <laughs> they look good but uh, no no uh, all these shenanigans uh question any thoughts on the alleged holloman afb landing film the emenegger film story that's a description i've never heard from another encounter military or private person, bluish gray nose. Yeah, well, ETs do come in different shapes and sizes, and there are certainly cases of people describing prominent noses on short little humanoids and tall and what have you. Right. So, I mean, there's ears, sometimes there's no ears, you know, right. there's hair sometimes, sometimes there's no hair. Right. So, you know, that, sometimes they look like a bug, sometimes they do not. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. Um, I take a grain of salt anything that's coming from military sources or government sources these days because right. of their heinous, I love that word, their right. heinous history with this subject. Yes. Uh, 
Yeah. But that's an interesting thing because there was supposed to be a released film on this and then they backtracked and backpedaled and there's some footage leaked out which allegedly shows the per this craft coming down towards Holloman. I would love to see it. Our government right. is saying, oh, we don't have evidence. Yes, you do. <laughs> Every fighter jet yes, has cameras on them. <laughs> yes. These little yes. white dots they're showing us, it's not, it's disingenuous. I mean, they, they have great footage. You no, know they do. You know they do. But I think they look at it as, well, it's on the need-to-know basis, and you people don't all really need to know. <laughs> That's it's pretty much how it is. I mean, when you I know, need you, to know. I, I need it. I can feel it right here. <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know. We all need to know. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. I, I know. know. The Edwards Air Force Base. I want to see that film. In 1954, when Eisenhower was there, and so right. were heads of state and military and technology right. and Right. The UFO landed and said, stop exploding nuclear weapons. Yeah. <laughs> to, you know, basically start disclosing. And we're like, no, no, we want your technology. We're not doing that. Right, right. Uh, I no, know. No, you know, trade for, oh, we're going to allow, quote, mm -hmm. abductions in exchange for technology. That's flat out disinformation, in my opinion. <clears throat> right. But there is a film out there that was filmed from multiple sources, mm -hmm. that's really good reporting on that. Not just me, but a lot of researchers have looked into it. Right. So yeah, they have landed at Air Force bases. Right. I'm pretty sure that that's not completely unique, but right. I don't think it's been going on lately. They've landed on aircraft mm -hmm. carriers. I think at some point they just gave up with the government. Yes. Dolly's like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. it. they're not wasting right. their time. Yeah. They're people who are that close mind and I mean they have evil intentions and you cannot sway them from it. Power. What power and the hunger for power does to people is just unbelievable because you are not here on the grand scheme of things. We are not on this planet for a really long time. You have to make the best of it. And what you do with it is going to determine, you know, your, where where you go next as far as you know the next part of your journey you know yeah, it's freaky well, the, yeah. well, it's very short my brother passed away a couple of years ago god oh, that was sorry he's only 61 years old yeah it really well, made, was a reminder of my oh my gosh i need to live every day here yeah i'm pro you know, I'm going to start sliding into my 60s before long. <laughs> I know, it's true. It's <laughs> like, like, oh, here it comes. <laughs> I know, I know. So it, 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 I, I think, you know, we think you need, we need wake-up calls. Without a doubt, we need wake-up calls. And we are being dumbed up or dumbed down. <laughs> and we, we have to, you, you don't have any control over what's going on around you. You just have control over how you handle it. So if you're just putting out all this bad vibrations, you know, this is what's going to come back. It, it's a karmic thing as well. You know, you carry that through life. You don't, you're already like carrying karmic things for yourself or your family or whatever the heck happened in the past, you know, one way or another, it, you know, it follows you back. And people are like, wonder why I just like, my life has just been crap all this time. I've been a good person. Maybe it's karmic. So when you factor all of that in, do you really want to sit there and add anything else to it that you, that you really don't have any control yeah, over? Your attitude is a big deal. I just yeah. looked into a case in Puerto Rico where a mother and daughter were taken on board. And the mother was basically dying because she had lost her husband and couldn't take it. And she was going downhill and they were going to move to their uncles. But on the way there, they were scooped up. <laughs> These ETs were their grays and human looking. Mm -hmm. They took them each into separate rooms. They healed the daughter right. of a condition with her legs, and then healed the mother and said, the cause of your illness is actually you. <laughs> you need to get rid of these negative feelings. Right. Like my husband, you know, they took her to see her husband, his spirit. They wow. They the daughter too. So this was on board a craft and basically facilitated a interdimensional spiritual meeting with her deceased loved ones, not only her husband, but her parents as well, who were also crossed over. Wow. 
And That's so nice. That's beautiful. They, both, they have this was missing time, by the way. They did not remember this. Of course <laughs> not. <laughs> You know, which oh. is bad because it wasn't really a scary experience for them. It was right. when they were scooped up. They're like, ah. Right. <laughs> but uh, right. yeah, they came back and they're like, oh gosh, I'm feeling better. <laughs> and oh my years gosh. later, they're under hypnosis and both sep separately recalled this. So that's, you know, co corroboration there. Right. Uh, not false memory syndrome if both people are remembering the same thing. Right. It was a cool case because sometimes people talk about, you know, seeing deceased loved ones on board UFOs, but I have one or two cases, <laughs> but that's when I read about it. I'm like, okay, you know, I guess this does happen. Mm -hmm. Right. I love the statement. I think the future pulls us away from the past. I think that's what we were touching on a little bit before, you know, like minus less all of this technology. I think, you know, you, you, I think that, I think they had it right. I mean, I remember seeing UFOs, Back in the day before satellites, I'm aging myself. I don't care. But, <laughs> you know, back before satellites. So when you saw something in the sky, you didn't have to question it. You know, it, it was there. I grew up up north. I would see all kinds of things on a regular basis. Well, I, I like that statement because, you know, I was... I grew up as a skeptic, right? right. <laughs> then, my, you know, my mom dies and I'm... In, living in a state of constant fear, find out UFOs were real. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is now I'm really scared <laughs> because they're taking right. people against their will. And they're, and then I started having out of body experiences and I'm like, okay, now I've lost my mind. You know, I need to rebuild my belief system and right. everything changed. You know, and I finally figured out, okay, this is why ETs are here. It's not so bad. It's actually good news. <laughs> we can go right. out of body. There is life after death. And I right. found out that prior to this, I was living in both the past and the future. Right. And I see this in people. They are not in the present moment. Their lives are guided by the trauma of the past and the fear of the future. <laughs> they're, you know, they're completely tied to both. And I gotta worry about where the, my next dollar is coming from. You know, this happened to me, I can't do that again. And if you can just kind of focus more on the present moment, it starts to expand mm -hmm. and you have this greater awareness and you can actually start getting clairvoyant visions of the future. and. Right. understanding the past it's a right. time is such an interesting thing because here right. on earth it's very focused and you're like doom, 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 doom. but you go out of body and everything this the veil is lifted mm -hmm. and it's a different time is a different experience it's hard right. to describe right but right yeah you people are like just stuck between the past and the future and pulled away from the present right. not even in the present Right, right. No, it's true. Um, I have to do a really quick station. I can put that in. I'm the manager. I have to do a sponsor <laughs> station ID. <laughs> so, sorry. Hey. Anyway, oh for God. those for those who are just tuning in, I know because I'm just so enthralled into the show and I don't like having to stop. I can't preach it, not do it. So anyway, for everybody just tuning in, you're listening to the Outer Realm Radio. I am Michelle DeRoche. Special guest tonight is our dear friend, Preston Dennett. Yay. I would like to call you Mr. UFO. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> so he is talking about his uh, new book, which is... UFOs, not well, UFOs, aliens, not from around here, volume five, which is filled with stories of UFOs and aliens and all that fun stuff, but in a nice way. But this one here apparently has some, some pretty risque stuff in it, <laughs> like anal probes. There's well, a chapter on anal probes. That's a prior me, volume. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's just, it's outstanding. <laughs> and we are broadcasting live on the United Public Radio Network, UFO Paranormal Radio Network, 105.3 and 107.7 FM. We are fully sponsored by the amazing people over at Folgers Coffee. We are sponsored by Justice Snicker, a.k.a. Dr. Snick, the sonic surgeon, and Steve McGinnis, the artist behind all of our logos and banners. So we're very, very, very grateful. Anyway, thank you all for tuning in to everybody in chat. You all rock, and we are so grateful to have you as being a part of the show. So thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. All right, so I was, uh, I was going to go up here while we were on the topic. 
do we have ETs living on Earth now? Kind of a trick question. Ah. No, I know Dolly says no. I think at some point we absolutely did. Right. Because there are some reports of this. Yes. Uh, so, you know, yeah, it's a trick question because I think actually we are all ET <laughs> ourselves in right. a way, you know, and, and I don't mean to like go, stay on the fence or dodge the question, but right. yeah, it's a trick question. Right. I personally think it's entirely possible some are here and chose to be here. Uh, but, you know, that's almost impossible to answer. Uh, right. But definitely in the past, because there's so many examples of ETs being in public places, like whether it's, just, you know, in front of a school. <laughs> there was a right. really interesting case that, <laughs> right. uh, by Shane Kurz of this ET right in front of the school. <laughs> right. High school, but, it's there. You know, yeah. Gas stations, gas stations, convenience stores. Right. Casinos. Right. So yeah. they're there. Um, yeah, well, they can walk among us. I don't know how long they're staying here. Right. Uh, hybrids as well. I think because every now and then you'll see people who've got really big eyes. And I was just talking to a guy who met this. Re this was in the in the 70s. He had this really interesting conversation with this lady who walked away from absolutely convinced she was ET because she had this just strange, very peaceful outlook and was super etheric and right, and just different. Uh, and he's like, right. I don't know, you know, people are going to call me crazy, but I'm, I think she was ET. You know, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. But I mean, you hear so many stories now where, I mean, it's believed that they're all just blending in. I would never say. <laughs> say. I, know, I know Dolly blurted it out a few times. Like, Dolly! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, it could be your neighbor. They don't all look like, you know. Well, I do remember eyes. hearing a report from this guy in Topanga Canyon, you know, which is a huge hot spot. I did a book on it, but I still get reports there. I, I grew up there. Right. This guy's, you know, there's two reports, actually, now that I think of it. This guy's driving along, and he pulls over because there's this guy looking at the stars. And he's like, okay, this looks interesting. He just pulled over because, you know, it was a clear night and he wanted to see the telescope this guy's right. looking for. Right. And the, the guy kind of looked a little different. He had the hypnotic eyes. The eyes always give him away, right? <laughs> and uh, he said, go ahead, look through the telescope. It wasn't right. a telescope. It was something else. <laughs> it was super. I mean, it was showing <laughs> stuff that he couldn't believe. Right. I didn't even do a formal <laughs> interview with him. Right, right. Came away from that meeting, I mean, thinking that was an ET. Yeah. And I heard this other guy who's driving along and, and stops his car because he's looking in a house, and there are four people sitting at a table, and they're just all like that, just staring, not moving. And he said it was the weirdest thing. And I forget what he said, but he, I forget. But there was something he said that like made me like, what the heck? <laughs> like was the house was still there but there was nobody in it or i don't know it was a weird story but but he looked at the <laughs> four people and they were not moving for a long time right <laughs> just sitting there not you know they weren't eating they were all, this is a family you know a, a husband and wife a son and a daughter right so, right i sometimes think about that like what the heck was that <laughs> <laughs> what did i just see yeah that would be that would be pretty rough and speaking of et's among us i just looked into another case from South America mm. with Brazil, where this guy picks up a hitchhiker and he's like, would you like a smoke, you know, a cigarette? Mm -hmm. He says, no, I don't smoke. And, but he was carrying this weird metallic case and he had really piercing blue eyes that were twice, almost twice the size as normal, really white blonde hair, a tiny, tiny little nose, very thin mouth. And I was asking all these questions of him, right? <laughs> And right. the guy says, well, yeah, this is, I live at this and this address. And the conversation went on a while. And he says, okay, you can drop me off here. It's the middle of nowhere, right? <laughs> He's like, well, okay, you sure? It's like, yeah, you can drop me off here. Right. So he drops the guy off, goes driving, and minutes later, a UFO comes down and takes him. <laughs> right. And uh, later, he was taken on board again. And there, of course, was the guy, still dressed in his earth clothes, <laughs> the guy with the, you know, the blue eyes and the blonde hair. Mm-hmm. He says, don't be yeah. afraid. You know, yeah, it's me. He introduced his name as Alex. He's like, I'm Alex. I'm sure right. you are. Right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, this is a guy. 
I love right. these kids. It's the Hitchhiker. I did a, ch a chapter on one of the Not From Here volumes, Hitchhiking Aliens. Right. <laughs> it keeps happening. This is a new case. I've got like 12 or more than that, 15 of, of right. Hitchhiking ETs. <laughs> so right. that does happen. I, you know, I truly believe that we have been living through, especially the last decade, I think people have, they feel like they can come forward a little bit more. And I think we're going to start seeing a lot more. And with that being said, I think we need to start being careful. As Nepakoku says, hello and welcome. How do you conclude something is fake news? Is it gut or research? This is a really valid question because we're really going to start having to question what we see. Everything. Everything. Yes. Everything. You know, definitely do not discard your intuition. Right. And if the more you can practice with it, it, but you absolutely have to verify. I think it's very important to do your own research, verify right. everything. The news is famous for, I mean, I, we talked about it, you know, how I've and you have been misrepresented on TV. Uh, but this is true with all kinds of different subjects. And the news in particular has changed over the years. Right. Oh my God, it used to be news. It's not really news anymore. It's very editorial. And people are just mm -hmm. giving their opinions. And they're flat out lying in some of these cases. I think, mm -hmm. yeah, use your intuition for sure. But if you hear a story that you is questionable, check it out. It's you know, We do have Google and all kinds of ways of confirming mm. information. Well, unless you're, you know, suppressed mm. and censored, like some yeah. poor folks it's up in Canada. <laughs> you know, this has been called right. the information age, which lasts about, <laughs> what, five years before it turns into the information age. Right, <laughs> right. The lies are rampant. This it, is why we need to do telepathy. Right. You know, because then we would know if a back, right. you know, dollars is back engineered can fool you. Well, if you have telepathy, you can right. figure it out. You know, right. if you have telepathy, we can look at any politician and say, well, nope, no, 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 no. Yes. No, 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 no. Yes. Right. So essentially, we have to go, to go back to, you know, to the roots of just keeping our abilities heightened. Yeah, well, certainly this is what the ETs are trying so hard to do. I did a chapter in the not from this current volume on warnings right. and messages because so many people were asking me, you should do a right. book on this. You know, if this is the message people often get, do a book on it. And I kept trying, but gosh, the, it's a me I want to write a 500 page book on it. And I'm like, right. you know what? Let's just do a chapter. Let's get this out. Right. Because it is the most common message people get. Right. And that ended up being the longest chapter. And I think it's my favorite and most important chapter in the book. Wow. Wow. But I'm glad that, um, you know, you're informing, you know, people on that. I think it's really important to, because, you know, we're all born with these abilities. And I think, again, it, it's just conditioning. It's just what they put in the food. It's just what's in the environment. It's it, it, it hinders our abilities and we walk around in a cloud with our, with our, you know, our head all fogged up and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, okay. Next. Has Dolly Preston or others ever encountered a small, completely round headed, joyous ET? Sounds like a little happy gray. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> I'm not sure if I would say, gosh, well, let me think about this. You know, none is specifically coming to mind. I have to tell you, it wouldn't surprise me a bit. Because you hear, you know, the praying mantis have usually described triangular heads. I've heard, you know, kind of squarish heads. They're little blue beings. Right. And yeah, squat little roundish heads. Most are oval, you know, very much like ours. But, you know, there are round faced people here on this planet. Uh, right. Joyous, yes, absolutely. Happy right. little dancing grays. Right. One lady I interviewed, she thought they were kids at first. She was taken on board at age 12. Right. Back in 1947. And, and she thought they were kids at first until she realized, you know, they're no, they're bald. They've kind of got large eyes. 
but they were feeling her hair. She had long blonde hair. Ah, they this see is the like same the hair. girl. Who, you know, we talked about the flowers. Yes, she kept alive. That's her. Right. She, right. This UFO lands on the road in front of her she, while she's biking to her friend's house, and there's a praying mantis in the in the doorway. She, oh, says you can call me mother. You know, you can call me mother, and it was very friendly. And she was taken on board. It was a very friendly experience. And these little grays were hopping around, laughing and joyous, feeling right. her. They were like little kids. <laughs> they, took her, they took her hand and they led her excitedly to show her the ship. So right. it was a really cool experience. Right. And people have described see, feeling, quote, a love like never before. I've heard that exact phrase a number of times. Right. A little <laughs> two foot, three foot tall ETs. Uh, right. So yeah. Lots that does come up absolutely. I'm not sure that I've heard someone describe a perfectly round head, mm -hmm. but now you got me curious because, well, yeah, there was one lady who was, was driving down the highway. I knew one would come to me, right? <laughs> and her husband was asleep. I, I think this was in like, gosh, Arizona, Nevada, no, the southwest. And it's late at night, of course. It's, Whenever you're on a remote highway late at night, stay aware <laughs> because that's when they're going to come. <laughs> right. And she sees this figure <laughs> with this little round head running across. It stops and looks at her and she screams <laughs> and races past it. And her husband w wakes up. He's like, what? She's like, you're not gonna believe it. He was wearing a jumpsuit. It had this little round head. It looked right. Uh -huh. at He's like, let's turn around. She says, I'm not turning around. I'm gonna go to the nearest city, and you're welcome to go back. I am not. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> she wasn't gonna do it. <laughs> but, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you, kids are awesome, though. Like, do you, when a child, have you ever interviewed like just little ones to have given you accounts of of couple of yeah. times yeah and what's that like compared to because i guess you have to be careful not to lead them right yeah well i won't do it unless it's in the presence of their parent of course for legal reasons, yes right right but and, uh, kids are just so enthusiastic when they're retelling you this an incredible oh, it was adventure fun. yeah yeah i've done it with you know my own relatives certainly i have no right. compunctions there right <laughs> you know, i'm the uncle I, I don't need to talk to your dad you're talking what? to me now. <laughs> and I'll take whatever repercussions come. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Give it yeah, up, I kid. I did, <laughs> yeah. did interview this 12-year-old who thought he saw a UFO, and his dad contacted him and says, I really want you to talk to my son. I think this would be a good experience for him. Right. I'm like, sure. And he was on the other line. Now, this was a phone interview. And it was so much fun <laughs> because this kid was so excited. He'd seen this thing. And... You know, I knew instantly this was a real UFO because he was describing the classic, you know, it stops, it hovers, it darts. Right. And I told him, well, you know, I got the whole description. And then I played the, you know, I asked the hard questions like, how do you know this wasn't a plane? <laughs> and the kid did not get flustered at all. And, you know, and he's like, oh, I know it wasn't a plane because planes go in a straight line across the sky. <laughs> and I'm like, that's right. How do you know it wasn't a helicopter? He says, it made no noise. There's no noise. Oh, like, was it low enough for you to see? Like, yeah, it was really low. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. And I've been at UFO meetings, you know, or right. conventions when people bring their kids up and they're like, tell them what you saw. And the kid's all excited, like, it was a little, you know, this little kid came and played with me. And he had no hair and he had big eyes and right. stuff like that. So that's not right. a formal interview, but right. yeah. But it's cool. are very open minded. Right. And, uh, but that's the thing is I think they are at that point. And somewhere along the line, sometimes it changes and they develop this, you know, this fear. Have you talked to um adults that have had this from childhood and do they still have, you know, fears? And I only you know, it comes to mind can when you say, Oh yeah, she was only this age, I saw a mantis in her doorway saying, Call me mother. I'd be like, Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> you know, like I mean, that's just the first impression, of course, you know. So well, she she said it was very maternal, very loving, very yeah. nurturing. Right. But yeah, I talked to one lady who had experiences as a young girl and it was very joyous to come, they'd play with her toys, she'd play with them. It was fun. Uh, around age 12 or 13, 
mm. not fun anymore. Right. <laughs> having missing time, she was terrified and didn't want it. And and then grew up into an adulthood and things changed a little bit and it became a very positive experience for her mm -hmm. ultimately. But she went through stages, which I, I certainly see quite a bit. Right. At age 12, they told her, you know, when you want us to come, all you have to do is roll up your blanket into a Tootsie Roll and tuck it under the bottom of your mattress. And that way we'll know that's our signal so that you're ready to be visited. She said, it, and, and it worked. They would come and visit wow. her and give her all these profound messages. Well, she never could remember. She never could remember what they were telling her. Wow. See, that's really tough. Do you think this, they don't remember to protect them? You know, just to protect them from others? Um, I don't know. Do you think they don't tell them just to? Well, I don't mean so much other, you know, I, I'm, I'm dealing, you know, I, I'm dealing with a couple of families right now. And it's not necessarily just you know a t that they're having experiences with i think it's military as well and it's happening now to the to the children not unusual right and so for me it's like yeah. yeah they'll come in my lab people who are having genuine encounters and muddy the waters there right. was a lady this is who was taken on board as a kid and they showed her all these nuclear bombs and stuff exploding and said, you need to know that this is a real danger, mm -hmm. but you won't remember this. You're going to have some nightmares about this, and we're sorry, but you're going to remember this at some point. And right. she remembers she had horrific nuclear bomb nightmares that night. Wow. Which, you know, I think they were doing their best to sort of shield her while at the same time imparting the information. And as an adult, she realized what was going on. Right. But yeah, I think to some extent they don't they don't want to traumatize people. The last yeah. thing they want to do is scare people. Right. The first thing they say is don't be scared. You're okay. Calm right. down. Everything's fine. No harm will come to you. Right. Right. And if you're still like, nah, this is when you more than likely we'll have missing time and probably not remember anything. Mm -hmm. Just missing time. Right. Right. But you know, trauma has a way of bubbling to the surface. And then you see these faces looking at you and you lose your mind. And this is when people say, you know, how can you say this is good for me? You know, I had missing time. They, I know they took me. I've got this mark on my body, I'm having these nightmares. Right. Go, yeah, well, I understand. Uh, have you right. ever gone under hypnosis? And sometimes they do. And then they start to realize, well, the first thing they did say was this. Yeah. It, then, it's then tough. Healed. They actually did heal me. Right. One guy in England, he's, he doesn't like them. <laughs> Or comment, he hate, doesn't like it to this day. Right. I asked him, have you gotten anything good out of this? He's like, well, me and my wife uh, have incredible clairvoyant and psychic abilities. And we go to these contests, we win them. <laughs> you know, yeah. Because, we yeah. Know, which, you know, you know, whatever to pick. Right. And he has major, major out of body experiences. Right. So. Right. But so that, I mean, that's a, that's a gift. It you is. Know. He connects it definitely to his experiences. Right. The astral projection is a big part of it. Telepathy, astral projection, healing, mm -hmm. uh, mediumship, right. clairvoyance, precognition, remote viewing. Right. I did a chapter in one of the Not From Here books on human levitation. <laughs> because We did a show on that. Yes. And it this was is fascinating. I mean, this is something we can, can you imagine being able to do that? That's the yes, all the time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right? I just talked to a lady, Heidi Hansen. I'm like, I don't suppose she's contacting me. I'm like, I don't suppose you've levitated. She's like, Yes, I did. Right at the top of the stairs, you know, floating around, circling around the landing twice. You're kidding. It's always at the when they're little kids, often yeah. but up and down the stairs. We talked about that. But contactees are sometimes have this ability. So I, I don't know if it's sparked in them or what have you. Mm -hmm. Jack Vallee had a case where they yes. got skilled of a paralysis, partial paralysis and an axe wound. Right. He levitated twice, verified by his wife, just floating around, lying, 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 flying around. Right. But Hopkins had cases. Stephen Greer, he did it twice, he says. Hold on. Right after he was taken on board, had a very spiritual experience with the Greys. Right. He got out of the craft and started levitating home. Boing, 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 boing. And later levitated, you know, years later. 
This is mm -hmm. an ability we have. And the ETs are trying so hard to wake us up to what we can do. Mm -hmm. you know, right. Another lady I talked to got back from her, her encounter. Books started flying off the walls. You know, doors are opening and closing. Lights going on and off. That's what I was telling you. Projection and, and like, we powerful beings. Yeah. Telekinesis. Yes. You know, yes. Dolly experienced a few episodes of telekinesis as right. a young girl. Well, yeah. Like more, more than once, actually, yeah. as an adult, too. Yeah. So, right. Well, yeah. So this is something that they're trying very hard to wake us up to, that we're immortal, you know, that mm. we can go out of body, that there is life after death. Mm, right. Um, Karen, hello, says, what makes people levitate, some and not others? Anyone can do it. It's in every culture. Mm -hmm. There are literally hundreds of reports. Each culture has their own approach to it, not their own understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with across Europe, basically lots of nuns and monks started levitating because they prayed all the time. Yes. God and steeped their lives in love and were very moral and mm -hmm. really just worked on spiritual mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the Far East, they learned how to do breathing exercises and chi right. and all the you know, all these martial arts kind of stuff. And in like India, they had specific exercises mm -hmm. on how to specifically levitate. I mean, they mm -hmm. had it down to an actual science. In Africa, they would, yeah, you know, rhythmic breathing. Right. And, and uh, all, all these different disciplines. Anyone can do it. Native mm -hmm. Americans did it. They right. had what they would call um, spiritual runners, or I forget what they called it, um, special runners of some right. kind who could basically, well, they, they tracked this one guy, these trackers, had th th this group of people had to go from one city to another. And the Indian guy's like, no, I, I don't need to take the wagon. I'm just going <laughs> to run there. And so they followed him. You know, he's running off. And they followed his footprints. They cut wider and wider and wider and wider. And then they disappeared. And finally, three days later, they get to the town. And he's there. And, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, he's been here for three days. We're, what took you so long? <laughs> this guy was, you know, did Indian running, I think is what they, they called it. That's crazy. Anyone right. can do it. Anyone. Right. Right. Little, lots of cases of little kids doing it. There was a guy. There's videos Russia. of kids doing it. Yeah. There was a guy in Russia who they asked him, "How do you do it?" He says, "I just do it by willpower." He's a farmer. Mm. There was another right. guy, Irma Leyev, a famous psychic. Mm. He says, "I just imagine it. I I visualize it." Mm -hmm. Another lady. She was at a one of those side yard fairs, you know, those country fairs. Right. It was right. a little booth. She could basically lighten her weight by half. And it That's was crazy. a little trick. She's like, some mm. researcher found this and tracked her down and asked her how she does it. Right. <laughs> she said, well, my dad could do it. And I inherited this ability. I found a bunch of cases where it is inherited. The royal Hungarian family had several people in their lineage that could do this. Right. But she said, basically, I just feel light in here. She tapped her torso. I just get this feeling of lightness. Mm. Uh, according yeah. to Daniel Douglas Holm, a medium, he says, well, the spirits help me do it. They basically are lifting me up. Right. So I think there can be external and for forces and internal. But mm -hmm. according to Milarepa, the first <laughs> guy who left any written account, mm. he said, well, I started flying in my dreams. And then it trans, you know, they became lucid dreams, not about experience. And then it translated into real life. Right. One day I just could do what I could do in my dreams. Mm -hmm. You can fly in your dreams. And right. on the other side, that's your natural state. You can do levitation, mm -hmm. telepathy, telekinesis. I was doing right. telekinesis the other day out of body. <laughs> and I was actually catching things on fire too, which I've never right. been before. I was being a fire starter. <laughs> right, right. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Oh, right. <laughs> no, yeah, I love it. I wake up and I can't do it. I just can't do it. <laughs> I love it. I keep trying. Um, tell us about another chapter in your book. What else are you covering? Besides oh, covered... anal probe, I have to say it because everybody says, How do you share it? Not laugh. I can laugh every single time. <laughs> so. Um, well, I did one on what I would call UFO swarms. Oh. Right? Okay. Let me, let me pull up a photograph for you. Yes. All these cases 
where people have seen not one or two UFOs or three or four, right? Like a bunch. And there's this one case from Farmington, New Mexico, where UFOs showed up in huge numbers, not 100, 200, but like more. And they flew around constantly. There it is. And here, let me first say what date this was. Oh, yeah. March 17, 1950. Okay. Skies of Farmington, a little town in New Mexico, uh, northern New Mexico, just filled with UFOs. This was right. during the day. There's like 3,000 people in town, 6,000 outlying areas. Right. Traffic stopped naturally. <laughs> School stopped. <laughs> and everyone came running out of their businesses and homes. At least half the town saw this. And it right. went up for about two hours. You know, 200, 300 objects darting around. That's insane. Can you imagine? There's nothing like this. I found no. about a half dozen cases. Right, uh, right. And it went on for two hours, stopped, came back again. And someone did get a photograph, and here it is. Wow. No, it's not a super great photograph by today's standards. No, but, but it's still pretty significant that somebody captured it. Yeah, because the the government folks were saying, no, this is a skyhook balloon that shattered into little bits. <laughs> and what, okay. is the, what right. are you talking about? Yeah, sure. You no, know, police officers saw the scientists, the mayor, newspaper mm -hmm. reporters, uh, teachers, everybody saw this. And they wow. described it as a metallic craft, which, you know, if you can see this one right here, mm -hmm. that looks just like a metallic craft. Right, it sure does. You can see the dome. And yes. They were coming together and pulling apart, hovering. Some were releasing smaller craft. Right, uh, right. So, yeah, I found a bunch of cases. Well, not a bunch. I was hoping to find more. Yeah. <laughs> I had my own case in Topanga Canyon where it was the same darn thing. The sky filled with craft. And I couldn't find a lot of reporting on this. Right. So, I think there's some important takeaways. In Farmington, it was clearly a display. This right. was an event which I think was designed to basically let people know <laughs> we're real. This we're is real. undeniable. You know it. This is getting into the newspapers. It did. It generated right. national headlines. Right. It's right. virtually unknown today. But right. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to make it known <laughs> because right. it's an important case. I think that... Now we would be hard pressed to see anything like that because I think there's so much reverse engineered stuff going on. I don't know that we would be able to tell the difference unless you're really versed in what you're looking for. Yeah, I don't think you would have that kind of you know crazy experience. If that's something that it just seeing one is something, yeah. but seeing like a like a mass amount of them at one time that is unheard of. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up another picture here. Uh, Adrian is just saying, how old was that photo? Sorry. That was 19, well, let me see, 1950, 1950, March 17, 1950, St. Patrick's Day. Wow. Okay. Interesting. But here's one, which is a very famous wood cutting from, yes. oh gosh, 1561, I think it was, Nuremberg, yes. Germany. Yes. I've wow. seen it before. Yes. Yeah. And this is another case I found. Yeah, it's old, <laughs> Middle Ages old. Yes. But yeah, that's craziness. Super interesting because there was a written accounts of this as well, and it's memorialized in this. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, it's a wood print. And if you right. look, there, you can see this little thing crashing to the ground. Even. Yes, it's yeah. fat. You know, it's interesting that somebody took the time to put this together. Yeah. To, to document it way back then. And you know, how many? There. So this is a daylight encounter. <laughs> yes, yes. Like how many times has this happened in ancient times that where maybe it wasn't documented? Who knows? Yeah. Maybe it was like an everyday occurrence. <laughs> I mean, it was... um, well, there was another one that was just a couple of years later. Here it is. Wow. This is in Sweden. Right. Um, Look at that. 1566, Basel, Sweden. Right. Uh, again, doc pretty well documented. Yes. And remember, there was no writing back then. No people didn't go to schools. Literacy was almost non-existent, except among priests and mm -hmm. you know, some of the royalty mm -hmm. and scientists here and there. 
Right. But most people did not read or write. Right. That's true. There weren't public schools. Mm -hmm. So most of the stuff just wasn't recorded. No, exactly. Or they would do it by images, you know. Yep. So yep, exactly. It so is it is so here. interesting. <laughs> it is so interesting. Have you ever done research on the sky ships? And <clears throat> not ships the way you see them, but ships. There were reports that have gone back, in, you know, to the Middle Ages about flying actual, you know, like galleons. And oh, yeah. people would be just dropping down. They would just drop down on ladders and you could hear, you know, you could you could just hear this thing just sailing in with normal sails. Now, there's it's almost steampunkish. There's some weird accounts of this. People, people seeing buildings in the sky even yes. i think some of this is interdimensional yeah some of this is probably what we call superior mirage yes uh, because yeah. i mean there's some really convincing mirages that in under very rare weather conditions can basically put stuff right up into the sky right you're seeing a perfect image of it but right. no i mean there was a really famous case which was clearly not that and there were it was different it was a different buildings it was not mm -hmm. of that time period right well, that's right. really weird stuff going it on. is really fascinating stuff like this one of these instances with the sky ship they dropped this anchor and it got caught on on a like a, a church door i know that case yeah. do you know it when the people are swarming <laughs> and the guys trying to climb back up and unhook his unhook the yeah. anchor that was there was a lot of that going on in the airship wave of the 1890s to about 1910. Yeah. But and this is was, like Middle Ages. Yeah. It, but the, there was a huge wave yeah. at that time, which was kind of ushered in the modern age of UFOs, sort of. It, it was well before it. But in that I Galileo Junction in New Mexico, <laughs> there was yeah. a teacup or some, you know, some stuff came out of that ship and, and it was basically scooped up by a collector. Right. Right. No, I'm just acknowledging the comment because maybe ETs were uh, having to appear in a more familiar way to them at the time. It's very possible. You know, no. my my mother used to hear something all the time in the house in and around the same time. I said, it's got to be residual. I'm like, I know if there was something about. But she sent me a recording of it. You know what it sounded like? Have you ever heard like rope, like rigging on an old ship and it just twists yeah. and rubs against the wood? That's sure. exactly what it was. Wow. And she says, no, it's in the corner somewhere in here. You know, she would always hear it around this one specific corner of the house. I'm just like, this doesn't make any sense. I've never, I've never heard this. It's like some dimensional thing. So, you know, you remote view. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a ship. <laughs> it's just, yeah, there was a very famous spot in England called Hangman's Noose. Right. A lady I interviewed went there to visit her uncle, and he didn't tell her there was a ghost in the house. Right. Freaked her out when it happened. And he's like, honey, ghosts are the order of the day here in England. Let me take you to Hangman's Noose. And you'll right. Hear it. right. And they sat down late at night, and you could hear this horse come galloping up, and this guy get hung <laughs> right the, the news and the snap and the whole ordeal and she's like okay i've heard it oh no uh, that's isn't it great though <laughs> wild there was another lady i interviewed who kept hearing rap music but it wasn't you know in this in, in her neighborhood and she's like are, are you guys hearing this and I'm like yeah and they would try to find it and they never could it was kind of ethereal and they'd walk around and it would you know right kind of move around Right. And finally, she did a research. This was a huge Native American settlement, and they would do Indian drumming. <laughs> you know, they right. had their drums there. And as soon as she researched it and listened to it again, she said, that's Native American. That's residual haunting of Native Americans doing their right. music. Right. Really cool. It is really cool. I love it. I, I love it. That. I was in the office once, got to work late alone. <laughs> This is in Canoga Park. And I'm like, who's here? There's somebody talking in the other room. And I know that, you know, I'm alone in the building. Right. <laughs> or, or, I mean, this large office. There might have been other people in the building, but I don't think so. Because I was right. working late. I jumped up and I ran. I'm like, nope. And so I sat down there and I was very, I could hear people talking. 
Right. And it was just below the level where I could understand the words. And I would kind of get, a couple, but I could hear like a man and a woman. I'm like, this is not me freaking out. This is not my imagination. I am right. hearing people talking. <laughs> right. And I ended up talking to everyone in the office because you know, there was 20, 30 people I worked with. Right. Like, oh, yeah, there's a ghost in the bathroom. It flushed the toilet on me. I saw it in the mirror. <laughs> Right. All the girls were complaining about this ghost in the bathroom. We're like, I'm right. not in that bathroom anymore. <laughs> There's this ghost and he's creepy. <laughs> right. Uh, ghost, ghosts are the last thing we all need to worry about. <laughs> you know? So, um, doll, ET craft are like cuttlefish. They can make you see them any way they want. Yes, I would agree with that. <laughs> I, yeah, would I think also that. there's something else going on because if in these ancient cultures, they weren't thinking ETs. You mm -hmm. know, when they see something in the sky, right. they're like, well, it's, it's got to be a ship because that's the only thing that right. we had at that time. Right. We have something called a belief system. And no matter what you're looking at in this world, you're looking at it through the lens of your belief system. Right. It's really hard for people sometimes to see past. Mm -hmm. like it's out of your worldview. You might mm -hmm. not even see it. You will deliberately ignore it. I've talked right. to people who were there at an encounter and they're like, well, no, <laughs> I didn't want to look at it or I didn't see it that way. You know, I saw mm -hmm. it this way. Right. Well, so right. This is a, a problem. And I think it can lead to some confusion on what people are seeing. Um, How do you yeah. interpret it? The Romans called them flying shields because right. you know, they were shaped like shields. And they're like, well, look yeah. at that shield up there. <laughs> Right. It's, it's funny, though, like, it's just like the ancient people just seem to be, I think, much more relaxed about it. Um, you know, I mean, it's, just, it's a bit of an assumption, but I mean, just just look at all of these. These ancient monuments, you can go into some of the Egyptian tombs and find modern day things and you could see, you know, the grays and the eyes and you could see the they, they, I mean, they, they have all kinds of, of different out of place artifacts, things that just don't seem right. But I mean, they're put in really significant places. The tomb of King Seti, you know, had helicopters and had UFOs and saucers. And like, this is in the tomb of a king, you know, he's documenting yeah. this. I this wish is... we had more writing on this. You know, the Library of Alexandria. Oh, get me totally started on that, Preston. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's infuriating <laughs> because that right. probably could have had some real reporting on some yes. of this stuff. Yes. Yeah. And well, that's why I think they did it in stone because like this is going to remain. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and monuments. Was, and... Yeah. I honestly think that there was open official contact. Yes. In our far prehistory, pre pre-recorded right. past. I would agree. I would agree because they documented this stuff and they were very good at documenting it. So can you imagine, you know, what, I mean, if you look at just some of, you know, you're looking at some of these these hieroglyphs or petroglyphs again, or out of place artifact, ancient monuments that just seem like how the heck would they have done this? How could they have built this? In the end, you know, it was very significant to to the ancient people, and they put it out there. I can't even imagine what the Library of Alexandria had, but if you go to Tibet, has a hidden library that uh, you know they found the hidden one this ancient yeah. library in romania these libraries still exist and they're but they're stuff not... that hasn't been translated no no can you imagine i bet there's like little tiny you know churches and stuff that have an underground room that's filled with yeah. all these manuscripts i you love it you know, as a kid, I'd be like, let's go to the bookstore. People I know. <laughs> I would be all over that. I would be all over that. Even yeah. now, I would be just like a kid in a candy store with a place like that. Because honestly, this is, these are just, there are places like this that are surfacing that have been well hidden from the world. Well, the good news is reason. they're preserved on the other side. Yes. You know, you can, all this, nothing is actually lost forever. Right. Everything is recorded somewhere. Yes. Oh, in the Kashuk Library. It's my favorite yes. library. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Well, thankfully, you know, thankfully there is that. So that we'll just have to tap into it and, and it is there. So um, I just want to, before we finish up, 
Um, no, not this one. <laughs> Sorry, Lady Spider Witch. I do love your little winky face. Uh, ET visitation, paranormal activity, seem related somehow. Absolutely, one hundred percent. I agree with that. Yeah, I think we've been talking quite a bit about this. You know, people are trying to link them to as the same phenomena. Mm -hmm. I don't think so, but I think when someone has contact, mm -hmm. uh, they start experiencing all these paranormal stuff, and it's a two-way street. ETs right. love it when people are psychic and they're very interested in contacting them and working with that. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Bigfoot and UFO encounters, they come together, <laughs> levitation, yeah. all these you know, out-of-body experiences. A simple right. sighting can trigger you to start having astral projection. I've got several right. cases of that. Right. And it's just kind of like your belief system has gotten you know, an awakening. You're suddenly thinking a little bit out of the box and that can send you on a spiritual quest. Mm -hmm. Lots of near-death experiencers start having contact. There's weird right. connections going on here. Right. I agree. I agree. It's it, we're in for a bit of a fascinating ride, I think. So tell us again the book. Where can we find it? Um, yeah. You know, what do you have coming up? up? Again, there it is. Let me uh, take this down that. one second. <laughs> Lock in the way. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. I love that cover. Thank you, Christy. Not from here, yeah. volume five, available beautiful. on Amazon, other yes. online retailers. You can go to my website, of course, and read excerpts on this, prestondennett.weebly.com. Yes. yes. And, We've had uh, that going through the whole stream. So yeah. talking about it on my show with Dolly Saffron, The Light Gate. Yes. Which airs each Monday evening. Yes. Um, yes. 6 9 p.m. Oh, 6 p.m. You're in Pacific okay. time. I know you're on the Pacific time in the be, brain. But it's, yeah, it's still, <laughs> right. I still kind of think that way. Right. 9, 9 p.m. Eastern. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I've got my YouTube channel where I'm putting out my research for those who don't want to read books. Right. And my books are going on Audible as fast as I can get them there with oh, publishers good. that will let me do it. So right. I, no. Yes. So, so yeah. lots coming up. Are you writing poem. Symmetry? Symmetry too. Is this is this the next book that is coming out probably, before any other books? Probably. I'm working on another out of body book, oh. and I have another. You know, I've got several irons in the fire, but ah. you know, symmetry mm. is taking priority. Yes, because I feel yes. like it's time. And yes, I just gotta, you know how Facebook gives you reminders. <laughs> like two years ago, you were doing this. Well, symmetry yeah. came out. It hit number one. I looked yes. to see where it is. It's like number 80. It's bouncing around still on the top bestseller list. I love it. So I'm like, I wow. love it. As it should. <laughs> and not from here, volume five. Yay. Reached yes. number one. Woo. Congratulations. So wow. How I love cool it. is that? I love number it. Number one in the UFO subject. Not overall. <laughs> so right. trust me, it's still like the five, you know, what, 200,000 or 20,000. Hey, that, that, <laughs> is still, <laughs> that is awesome, though. No, but a lot of your UFO. books do that. A lot of your books yeah. do that. Yeah. That's, that says a lot. But, you know, I love your whole approach on things. I love that it's just very, you know, it's just very laid back and lighthearted because there's a lot of fear out there when it comes to ET, and there's going to be a lot more coming. So anybody who's feeling fearful, go pick up one of Preston's books or get on his YouTube channel. Listen to the I'm radio just laying show. Out the facts, folks. <laughs> exactly. In an accessible, readable way. Right. But, uh, yeah, I'm not trying to push an agenda of any kind. Right. I'm, right. I'm really, really trying hard to just put out the facts because there's so much disinformation out there. Lots of it, unfortunately. I wish, I mean, we're already at the top of the hour. Guys, I want to thank you all for being in the chat room. You guys just make it that much more fun. Uh, it's always nice to have, you know, audience participation. Big thank you to you, Preston. I just, I love, you know, just, just interacting and listening to all of your stories because there's so many amazing stories. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, so guys, go check out the YouTube page because you put them out every what Friday. That's right. Yep, ah. each Friday evening, a new episode. See, I try. I do, I've missed a day here or there. Yeah, well, it happens. We'll let it go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so next Wednesday night, guys, we're having our monthly open mic night. So. I 
You know, you right. asked, there it is. Yeah, we're handing it out there. And Thursday night, we welcome for the very first time Britt Elders, who's going to be discussing her books, UFO Contact from the Pallades, Volume 1 and 2. Uh, so this is apparently the 45th anniversary of all of this research, and it's going to be a fabulous show. So I hope you guys can all tune in. I know so, who she is. She's a pioneer. Yep. She's a pioneer. I know. So we're very excited to have her and, um, you know, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, good night. Have a fantastic weekend. We shall see you next week. Thank you all for tuning in.